John, make sense of all these headlines for us. We didn't even mention it, but there's European invention and their energy crisis as well. Yes, Deirdre, thanks for having me on. There is a lot going on, and uh, yesterday as well, we got a scare thrown into the market uh, with the developments that occurred in Baghdad, and specifically the attack uh, on the green zone, which got quickly resolved. So right now, the mode we're in is consumers are on a winning streak. Uh, they're being, we're, we're very lucky from that perspective uh, because we haven't lost the material amount of Russian supply yet. Uh, China demand has been very weak uh, year on year. Gasoline demand is down about 8%. Uh, and so we're hanging in there. I will highlight, though, that we do remain vulnerable to various headlines, like we saw with yesterday's Iraqi situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, with the economy going into a downturn, engineered by the Fed, uh, the demand picture just is not as robust or troublesome as it was looking uh, just a few months ago when all the concern came into this market in WTI traded up towards $130 a barrel. Right, but John, you mentioned China and its reopening. Does that not offset demand weakness that we could he see here in the United States? I, I think there's a lack of visibility on how sustainable the openings are. Uh, they continue to you know, avoid uh, a vaccine policy for whatever reason. And so to the extent we keep getting reports and, and developments that the downturn there, uh, excuse me, that the lockdowns are, are going to continue to be rolled out, uh, there is enough of a concern about demand in China uh, to keep a lid uh, on prices and the, and the worries about demand from them at bay, uh, again, for now. But also, too, the Chinese economy has been in trouble uh, really for a while. Uh, the GDP declining, uh, all, all kinds of other issues, their property market. They had to do a huge uh, intervention in terms of their, their currency and, uh, and lending to support things. So uh, the economic picture there outside of COVID isn't looking bright either. Right. But, John, does that mean you're not buying stimulus efforts either? I mean, Beijing is trying to ramp up activity separate of lockdowns. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical that they can pull it off. I think they're in much deeper trouble uh, than they've been signaling. Uh, and I think the data is bearing that out. So they have a lot of wood to chop in terms of getting mm -hmm. uh, their economy uh, back to a place where it would be a, a meaningful pinch on crude oil demand and energy demand here uh, going forward. I mean, they, they have cut back on their refining operations drastically uh, as a result of fears over internal demand, even though they could be massive sellers in the export market, which they're not taking advantage of for whatever reason, Deirdre. Mm -hmm. But I think internally the worries are real and persistent. Right. And, John, a lot of the headlines we set out at the beginning of this segment over the last 24, 36 hours, these are still short-term moves, volatile moves at these elevated levels. What is your longer-term outlook? I think we head lower here uh, into the fall. Uh, we'll certainly get back into the uh, mid to lower 80s for a time. Uh, the fears are going to emerge again, though, about what the outlook is for the winter. Uh, there is good news for the Europeans. Uh, some of the weather runs we just got on our desks this morning are showing a uh, warmer than normal winter potentially for Europe, which would be huge. So we may catch a break. Again, uh, we got to continue on this lucky streak. So I think the pressure remains to the downside well, with occasional bats over 100. But I think over the course of the winter, as soon as we can determine that supplies are, in fact, sufficient, we'll head back down lower again. What about Russia, though, John? What if we see, you know, more cuts or a full-scale cut out of the country? That is one of the vulnerabilities. But right now, uh, China and India in particular are more than happy to buy severely discounted uh, Russian barrels. And as a matter of fact, one development that came out of the Iraq situation that I referenced earlier is that the Iraqis are now looking to sell their barrels into Europe because they're getting displaced by these cheap Russian uh, bargain basement to crude oil supplies. So it's, a, it's a very much a moving chess piece. But yes, part of my downward outlook for prices is that the Russian barrels mostly stay on the market, which we have been able to achieve thus far. John, it's great to get your insights. Thank you. Talk to you again soon. John Kildaff. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.